These days, a portfolio website can really help set you apart in your job search, but also give people a way to know more about you and what you're up to. Here's why you need one and how you can use our free template to build your own portfolio. Now you might think, I don't need that. I have a GitHub profile with all my code and my CV tells employers everything they need to know about me. Here's why I still prefer portfolio websites. Number one, I like having everything in one place. I can link to my code, my CV, but also everything else I do. There are talks, articles, blog posts, even projects that aren't open source, so they aren't on GitHub, and I need a place to describe them. Number two, I, I do link to GitHub from my portfolio, but it's nice to first give an overview of who I am and what I do before they just dig into the code without any context. And number three, a portfolio gives me an online presence that is customized. And this is great for job searches because you can be a lot more creative in your website than in a resume. And this is because in a resume, you're optimizing for who's reviewing it, whether that's a recruiter, a hiring manager, or even a machine that's trying to filter your CV out. But beyond job searches, a portfolio also helps put yourself out there. It makes you more visible. And for me, that has really spurred interesting collaborations and conversations. So we made a free template for you to make your own portfolio website, and I'll show you how to use it after a quick word from our sponsor. Do you ever wish you could get a PhD in bioinformatics, but you don't want to interrupt your career and uproot your life? Well, good news. Today's sponsor offers an alternative. The University of Florida Department of Microbiology and Cell Science started a distance PhD program in microbial and cellular data science. This means you can do a PhD remotely, whether full-time or even part-time, while you have a job. And this is open to international students, too. This program has the same rigor as a traditional PhD program, but with some tweaks to allow research and coursework to be done remotely. As a distance PhD student, you'll be part of a lab at the University of Florida under the direction of a faculty member, and you'll conduct original research using biological data. Current students are researching topics such as antimicrobial resistance, links between genes and depression, and more. If you want to go all in on genomics, apply by September 1st to start next spring. See the link in the description below to learn more about this program from the University of Florida Microbiology. So this is what the portfolio website looks like. So it's relatively simple, but lets you do things like show who you are, what you've done recently, and also have pages that show your work experience, like what positions did you have, what did you do, your education, and you can have lists of things you made, like your articles that you wrote, and you can write them and host them all on your portfolio website. So this, for example, is a blog post that you can write in Markdown, and it gets automatically turned into HTML for you, and it has syntax highlighting if you do code in you know, Bash, R, Python, most languages should be supported here and you'll see the nice coloring. And yeah, so let's dive in. So this is the repo that you can check out. The link is in the description. And you, you have two choices. You can either fork the repo or probably best to click use this template. This will, unlike fork, you just make a copy of the repo if you don't need to keep pulling updates from the main repo. You can just use it as, as a template and you click create a new repository and then what you can do is once it's done you can clone the repository that you've created in this case i'm going to show the om genomics repository as an example and so let's go here and i'm going to git clone the repository and call it something meaningful to you like my portfolio and let me open this in here. I do trust myself. Okay, let me guide you through the code base really quickly. Most of the good stuff is in the source folder. The static folder just has images that you may want to host. So um, 
routes is the most important thing. So if you remember this article I wrote, it is at path article slash install XYZ. And the way this translates into the code is that it lives under routes slash article slash install XYZ. And there is a markdown file there. And so as you can see, this is the, the markdown version that gets converted to HTML. And let's actually see how we can tweak this a little bit and add a new article just to show you how this works. So the very first thing you're going to have to do is install all the packages that are required to make this thing work. Uh, so you're going to need NPM. There are description, there's information in the description on how to install that if you need it. And then you can do npm run dev. And this will let you run it locally. So this is showing up at localhost, meaning that changes that I make in here are going to be reflected automatically. So for example, there are a lot of details in the repo that tell you how to do this. But if you want to change your name here, you can do that. And as soon as you change, you notice this has changed from John Doe to Robert. So let's go ahead and add a new article here. So what I'm going to do is find the page that contains the list of articles, which is just, you know, slash articles, which corresponds to routes slash articles slash page dot svelte. This one is not written in markdown, so it's not dot MD. And so all I can, I have to do is just copy really this article. And let's say we're going to write a blog post about, I don't know, <laughs> how to install ABC. All right. And we'll just change the date to 2025. Pick another emoji. And then let's say install the path will be slash article slash install ABC. Now we can save this and now it shows up there. Of course, clicking on it will give an error because I didn't create this path. And so this is where I can go to routes, articles, and I can create a new folder, install ABC, and I can create a new file called plus page dot markdown. And now I can just write anything and it will show up here. And you know, again, this is this is markdown. So I can have bash code and all sorts of fun markdown templates. And that's it. That's, I mean, that's basically it. So what we, you would do now is you can commit the changes. And if you follow the instructions in the repo, it will automatically deploy the changes to your portfolio website, wherever you host it. In, in, the, in the repo, I show you how to host it on Cloudflare. It's probably, you can get away with getting a free version and it'll work just fine. And so while we're at it, let me just show you how to push changes. So if I look at the git status, I can see that I made two changes. So um, let me go ahead and add everything. And now I'm going to commit everything and say, add a new article about installing ABC. And now I'm going to push uh, to the main branch. And then if I go back to the repo, you can refresh, you could see it's, uh, it's updated. And now you can see Cloudflare pages, if you hook it up in the way I describe it, in the repo, it's currently deploying it to the website. And so we can actually see the build in progress. And once it's done, we're going to be able to see it in here. There we go. Now I can refresh. Boom. I just published my blog post. I can now share it with the world. Now there are a lot of ways to make your portfolio. You can use hosted platforms like Squarespace. You can use Jekyll with GitHub pages. But every time I've tried using these approaches, they never felt customizable enough. And in the case of Jekyll, at some point, I remember it just suddenly stopped working for me on my Mac. It just refused to run, kept giving me some cryptic error I don't even remember 
all I wanted to do was to modify something quick. So I ended up doing the whole dance I'm sure you're familiar with. You commit a change, push it to GitHub, wait a bit, refresh the page, refresh more because it didn't update and so on. And with Jekyll, I also find it hard to see which URL will show you what content, whereas you know the routes path is a lot more obvious to me. Another reason to use this template is that I think it's a gentle introduction to SvelteKit, which lets you build not just static websites, but full-blown web applications. And look, maybe you're not interested in doing that in your work, but it can be fun to see how that sort of thing works. So please give it a try and let me know in the comments if it's been useful for you. Thank you.